good. That's on two. That's on two. Two. Why? <laughs> That's nuts. <laughs> Freaking love that thing. Oh my god. I haven't had that much fun in a long time. Uh, okay, so the, the discussion is uh, the Hot Rod Deluxe versus high output pickups. Uh, that's kind of been the theme of the day. Yes, I'm in my jammies because I was supposed to be pursuing my rock and roll dig career today, but uh, because of the, didn't want to take, take chances with the weather with my car. Uh, it's gonna snow, got a snowstorm coming in. So uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to meet with somebody today that uh, if, we, <laughs> if he sees this video, this is what he's in for. This is what he's in for. So I hope he enjoys it. Uh, I can guarantee you, whatever you're hearing on that side of the amp is nothing. If you were in the audience sitting in front of this amp, your head would melt. <laughs> and it's not just from the volume. It's a loud amp, but it, it does smoothen out as it warms up. But it's, it's the aggression. Now, it doesn't compress. So for you guys out there, yes, the Hot Rod Deluxe is the number one selling guitar tubed amp on the planet has been I think since this except ex conception in the I think the what say 96 94 you ever get out of breath playing like heavy guitar like that <sighs> I'm winded by my amp um I I'm in I'm I'm caught in two worlds guys I'm caught in the digital world so I got this 15 watt crate amp hooked up to my G2 uh, FX pedal plugged through the, the bad boy here now only when I have my moments of insanity, which I really enjoy, I hook up the Hot Rod Lux, leaving the main speaker going, but there's a, an extra speaker outlet there, and I put it through this. The savagery then is just mind-blowing. Like, you wouldn't do it to your worst enemy. Yes, you would. You would do it to your best friend, let alone your worst enemy. Yeah, you would subject them to this and that hooked together. I can't wait till I do that experiment. I have not... I've done it with the SG3 for years and the SG61 reissue where I hook the Hot Rod Deluxe through this at the same time. And it's just, it's so savage, right? But I haven't done it with this kind of, uh, this kind of a guitar, which is a very modern sound guitar. Now I keep this guitar in drop C. Love it, drop C. I, I do other drop tunings. I really need like five of these guitars. Um, they're great, they're the Mark Holcomb seri uh, Signature Series. Fantastic guitars. Um, can't wait to see what they do live. Okay, here's here's the thing. Can you play metal on um, the Hot Rod Deluxe? Yes and no. The amp does not compress. Uh, what that does is it makes it really hard when you start digging in with the pick into the... It's like every note is really harsh. You really have to bully the note. Because it's not smooth like a compressed amp where it's like, this is like, <laughs> you know, it's like a pure rage and anger. Uh, and you got to make sure your picks aren't rounded off like mine. Um, sloppiness. But it doesn't compress, but it does warm up enough. So I would say if you have high output pickups, obviously the way Fender designed this amp is you, it, the hot rod is meant as a live amp. I see all kinds of guys over the internet trying to neuter these things because oh, it's too loud for my apartment but it's not what it's meant for uh you would be better off with another fender tube amp that say less wattage it's only 40 watts but it is a full 40 watts at any volume and it comes on quick uh they're meant for the stage they're really not meant for your apartment building uh they don't have a headphone jack it's 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 old school but it is kind of a one-trick pony uh, it is technically a single channel amp with three stages. So you have clean, crunch, and, you know, uh, boost. But if you have high output pickups, they will sound harsh through this amp until the amp warms up. And if you play it in the, the number one input, you really have to use that number two input. Uh, I've never really used it because I never needed it. Uh, the SGs uh, with the classic 57s, you could crank it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's crazy lively. But like this guitar needs to be a bit neutered to go through that because the problem is, is like that's meant for like Telecasters with single coils with no bottom end in it. So you got more bass than you'll ever shake a stick at. Uh, with the S Gibson Les Paul SG, you never use the bass on, on, on that. 
I know bass gives you volume, but the guitar already has it in spades. It's a mahogany guitar like this one, right? Uh, so, like, even with this guitar in split mode, it's still probably hotter. Just one single coil is probably still hotter than the, the humbuckers in... Uh, they're not like the Ingve humbuckers. They are They are actually quite pretty. They're, they're pretty, quite nice. Um, but when I do play this guitar live, I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Um, and I want to play it in drop C live for sure. Uh, this guitar is going to stay in, it, it's sacrilege to take this guitar out of drop C unless you're going to an, another crazy tuning. You cannot put this guitar in normal tuning and look yourself in the mirror. Like you would be disgusted with yourself. You would because drop C sounds so good. It sounds so good. Um, just the punch of it. This is a great guitar, by, by the way. I, I cannot recommend, especially this version of it, the price at the price point. Uh, pretty tough guitar to beat. Uh, you do have to get used to the flat fingerboard and all that. And you do have to get used to the harsh uh, high output pickups. Uh, the only way these pickups are, what they're really meant for is extreme amounts of distortion, which this guitar, there's no such thing as too much distortion. You can get Niagara Falls and it'll still be clear and you can still handle it. Uh, but what it doesn't compress, it can be harsh. So you need to lower the dB going in. And nobody plays, metal guys don't do the, uh, you know, this is your typical jazz guy or blues guy. Okay, so the solo is coming up. What I do is I slip to the neck. I put that on about seven. I put this on about three, and I get this wonderful tone. And when the solo is over, I do that. I go back to the bridge or in the middle, and metal guys can't do that. We're we're put it on full, flip flip. If you're lucky, you can get the push pull pot. Uh, I'm thinking this guitar would have been better wired up with a five way switch than a push pull pot, just because it's hard to get to doing that versus that, right? Uh, but that's just me. Uh, I, you know, I'm not going to change the guitar, but, but, you know, in future, like for live playing, you just don't have time to switch things, right? Um, you know, especially the high octane stuff. So the way to kind of tame this guitar, it doesn't make a difference much in the volume, but it's the number two input jack. And that's the big secret to the Hot Rod Deluxe for the high output pickups. So dynamic pickups are better for that amp. Hands down. That amp is not a tight sounding amp. It's an unruly, lively, angry, angry, pissed off sounding amp. And it sounds great. Um, I didn't think I could make it work with a modern guitar. Uh, although PR, this is a PRS and it looks like a vintage guitar, it, 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 trust me, this is as modern as you're going to get. 20 degree fretboard, uh, this neck is as fast as you could possibly. Yes, it's thick, but that means it's not going to be probably it's probably gonna be more stable live uh you know in you know muggy conditions and stuff like that um the sustain out of this bridge is just absolutely insane and it really translates through there clarity wise i thought the guitar was going to be even more muddier even if i could tame it a bit so there's no effects on that amp i'm one of those guys i want one plug that's it on the stage turn the damn thing on and just use my foot switch that's it uh, the gain in there is plenty and it's fine and it's actually once you get used to it because if you're used to playing a, com a compressed amp I, I play this compresses with that there's so much distortion on there it compresses naturally uh, it's nice and smooth to play this it, it, it's a little less forgiving at the high volume because you know when you're doing if you don't fret right because the notes are so harsh coming at you, like they're, they're full tone. It's a full tone coming at you. So it's the same as, you, you know, like that. It's just a full tone. So that, that's going to be hard to do that. But when you pull it off, it's the notes are going to like slice through people's brains, but in a good way. And they're going to love it. Uh, so yes, you can use... In the mix, that would sound pretty... If I was playing for Periphery, would it be a good sound? Probably not for them. Uh, but if I was playing in, say, even like Epica, which, you know, like uh, like that guy, he, uh, one of the guitar players plays the Ibanez, uh, looks like a baritone of some sort, and the other guy's playing just a regular Les Paul. So you could blend it in the mix really good. Like if you had one guy playing the really high compressed stuff on the rhythms, uh whatever and a way to compress the leads on that which you could do that with some sort of a pedal or whatever if you wanted if not just get used to playing you know digging into it you know what i mean uh the jazz five picks i think are the pick i need for the for that uh the jazz twos they don't
You can do it, but they don't seem to have the stiffness I need there. Jazz five. Yeah, yeah, jazz five. So next time I'm at the music store, I'm picking up a whole bunch of jazz fives. Stiff as pick. It's like using a piece of steel almost. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you can use that for some pretty heavy rock. Uh, death metal, no. Um, metal core, no. Uh, mind you, that said, if that's what I'm getting.